What is going on everyone? My name is Jason and these are Smart Shoes. Wearable tech has gone through a lot of ups and downs over the past few years. You had devices that seemed really cool, but perhaps a bit ahead of their time. You have others that have actually found a home in the tech market, primarily health trackers and smartwatches, definitely gaining success, but I would argue that they're more tech focused as opposed to fashion focused. And then you have the category that's the other way around, tech that is surreptitiously embedded in wearable clothing that you wouldn't even notice just by looking at it. And that's definitely the category in which these fit in. These are the Mija Smart Shoes by Xiaomi. So let's first talk about physical design. Considering that Xiaomi is a dedicated tech company primarily known for making smartphones, I have to say the design of these shoes are excellent. They must have hired someone in the shoe industry to join their team because these are legit good shoes. Sticking with current fashion trends, this is a one-piece knitted shoe made out of a breathable soft fabric that honestly looks really nice. Xiaomi used this fishbone infrastructure that provides better protection for your feet, and they did a really good job of not making the shoe look weird or awkward by covering the bones with the gray fabric. So you get these subtle lines that add some needed texture and design to the shoe without looking overbearing or ugly to look at. Because it's one piece, there's no annoying tongue that you need to prop up in order to get the shoe on. It has this high lip to grab onto, which is really nice, and it's paired with this high backing, which provides better ankle protection. While most of the shoe is very soft, almost resembling like a thick sock, these two areas are reinforced with rubber to ensure that they don't collapse over time. I love how it's measured to the dimensions of a high top, but they've designed the sides to be more like a low top with these flowing circular cutouts. The soles of the shoe are made out of a very very light, shock absorbent material that also has anti-slip patches on the bottom for protection. It's a split type midsole that's textured around the back and the side of the shoe, again adding a good amount of texture without a lot of flash. Between the insole and the outsole, there's a shock resistant midsole, a torsion balance sheet, and a heel balance patch that helps with stability and reduces the chances of sprains. The insole is made out of a breathable sponge material that feels really nice and again very light. Combine all these features with the knitted integrated top portion of the shoe and you have a sneaker that not only looks really Really fashionable. It's extremely lightweight and provides good protection to your feet. Oh, and I love that it has very minimal branding, another nice touch. For you outdoor, early bird, or late night runners out there, the shoelaces actually come with built-in light reflective fabric in the laces, which is nice as the shoe avoids any random gray patches, making for a much cleaner look. They look great for working out and just as good for casual wear. Wearing them, I was again kind of blown away at how comfortable the shoes felt. Because of the light weight, they felt like pillows on my feet and I was able to comfortably work out in these without having to break them in or having any sort of discomfort like tightness in certain areas, chafing, etc. Now these are things most would hope to find in any shoe they decide to buy, but remember this isn't a shoe made by Nike or Adidas. This is one of the largest smartphone makers that made the shoe and that does deserve some recognition. Okay, so now the fashion and design part of this review is over, let's go to the tech inside. The primary device connected to Mija Smart Shoe is this guy, the Amazfit Intelligent Chip 2, an Intel-based microchip that has a 6-axis sensor, accelerometer, and gyroscope. This in turn allows it to detect movement and store data such as distance covered, speed, calories burned, etc. Once the data is collected, it then transmits the information to your smartphone via Bluetooth, which can then be captured and analyzed through their dedicated MiFit smartphone application. Once you activate the chip, take out the insole, and you'll see a notch inside the midsole in which you can place it. Now you can place it in either shoe and the application will walk you through the calibration process. Once calibrated, you're good to go and the shoes will start collecting and transmitting data accordingly. Now if you're scratching your head and thinking that this all sounds a bit familiar, you're probably thinking back to the Nike sensor shoes that launched a while back. It was very similar in terms of idea and platform. They had a sensor that could be inserted into the midsole of some of their shoes, which operated in similar fashion. However, the technology never really took off as it did a mediocre job of collecting limited data in which a lot of the accuracy was questioned. The chip in the Mija on the other hand is far more advanced and can differentiate between walking, running, and even climbing without activating anything on the shoe itself, as well as covered distance and calorie burn. The interface on the application is elegant and simple to read and use, which is a plus. And I have to say, it's really fun to check up on, especially after a good workout with the shoes on. There are some limitations, however, first of which being that the Amazfit chip is powered by a disposable CR2032 battery. You know, that battery that looks like a coin. And although it does last up to 60 days, Days, it would have been way better if it had a rechargeable battery. Those coin batteries are a pain to keep around, and plus there's not really a good way to know if you're running low on battery or not, which could really suck if it dies in the 
middle of an important workout. The second limitation is more broad in it that it questions the platform of the wearable itself. In order to track the data that these shoes are able to track, requires you to actually wear the shoes. And unlike a watch or a bracelet which can be easily worn without complication, shoes can pose some challenges. If you're a person that likes to start counting up your steps from the second you get up, it'll likely be uncomfortable putting these shoes on first thing in the morning. That being said though, if you're looking for a way to just track your runs or other steps related to workouts, and you want to do it in a way that doesn't force you to wear anything else but a pair of really comfortable, really well-designed shoes, then you might have a winner here. Oh, and the icing on the cake? The Mija shoes are only $59, a very fair price for what you're getting. Overall, I think the shoes are pretty cool, and I'm almost happy just to have them just to wear. Even if I don't track anything, I think they really look good. Plus, I think it's exciting to see products like this being developed, but that's just me. Really curious to get your opinion on these. What are your thoughts on the Mija smart shoes or smart shoes in general? Do you think they have a space in the wearables market, or do you think they're just going to be made obsolete by other fitness trackers? Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. That's about it for this review. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed it. It really helps me out. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button and to turn on notifications so you can stay up to date with all my weekly reviews. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.